it's just total nonsense. The state of our country, the state of scientific research is in shambles. It's a joke. There is no legitimate, in my view, scientific research. Dr. Fauci and the CDC prove that. What we find in independent research is usually funded by some self-interest group for financial gain. There's always a political twist. And you know what? The hell with the public. We've got an agenda and we're shoving it down your throat. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Russ Kens. You are here with Safety Matters. I'm joined by my co-host, Sean Joseph. How are you doing today? Pretty good, Russ. How are you doing? Had a big week. Had a big week. Right on. Yeah. Get you uh, all excited to be... Y'all, did I get you fired up? Yeah, you did get me fired up. So for anyone watching, right, Russ has a really great ability. Before we start shooting, right, we're just catching up. It's a Friday, so good week. And I mean, you know Russ is just... You know, he's an incredibly insightful, charming guy. So, he, yeah, he's been amping me up before we get started here today. So, Plus, uh, charming you know guy, what? I like that. That was very good. You know what? I'm particularly excited today because... Oh, here we go. The I got a new hat. <sighs> wow, I got we, a new hat and I wanted to share it with you. Yeah. Well, wait till I get the, the t-shirts and everything else. Yeah, I got a The new whole hat. line of bling. It's a new hat that I'm trying out. So. All righty. Thank you, Sean. It will be available soon. Um, we got a lot to cover today in a relatively short matter of time, so let's kind of get right to it, if, uh, if you don't mind. Let's do it. Item number one. Love this story. Women drinking sugar-sweetened beverages have an increased liver cancer risk. Did you know that? I do now. We got to look at the data. Women mm. drinking sugar sweetened beverages. Well, the reason I say this is if you remember a few weeks ago, we did a story about uh, sweeteners in Coca Cola, mm -hmm. right? And how bad they were. And then, then the story came out and said they're not bad at all. Yeah. So saccharin and. Well, guess what? There's a new research out. And they tweaked it. Women. <laughs> It's women now that are the ones that are getting liver cancer. I don't know what makes a woman's liver different than a man's, a man's. But uh, research found that uh, you know women drinking this stuff is going to blow their liver out. Massachusetts hospital-led study surveyed <laughs> nearly one hundred thousand women so, over a median median age of more than twenty years. Women who drank sugar-sweetened beverages. Notice they don't actually say saccharin or sugar-sweetened. Well, sugar I, I, I was just going to say by those words they chose sugar-sweetened. Basically everything but water. <laughs> right is right. what you're saying so sugar sweet not artificial sugar okay Remember we did the story about artificial sugar mm -hmm. artificial sugar is bad for you okay got it yeah. so now it's sugar sweetened mm -hmm. so if you drink sugar sweetened beverages every day uh you're at a greater risk of developing liver cancer chronic liver disease according to international researchers and those are always unnamed that was led by Brigham and Women's Hospital in Massachusetts. So I first asked the question, who paid for the research? Why was this done? Of all, I mean, look, we're looking for cures. I understand maybe they're trying to find a cure for liver cancer, and they associated it to sugar. You know, sugars and everything. Uh, yeah, it Name something is. that sugar is not in, food product. Well, mm -hmm. Even when I buy sugar-free products, it's got sugar in it. It's true. Mm -hmm. Or they find convenient ways to package it with sugar. Right. Or sugar is addictive. You know, it's the most, an example. Yeah, it's the most addictive chemical in the world. You want to make you want to get an addict, just hit them with sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Boom, they're hooked. Why do you think we have an obesity problem? It's addictive. Sugar is in everything. <laughs> Anyhow, a recent study published in JAMA, very prestigious journal of uh, medicine. Uh, the JAMA Network Open included nearly one hundred thousand postmenopausal women from the women's health initiative study. Participants reported that their usual soft drink, fruit drink consumption, not including fruit juice, and then reported artificially sweetened beverages. We already talked about this uh, consumption after three years. They were followed up for a median of more than two decades. That's interesting. Researchers looked at self-reported liver cancer incidents and death rates due to chronic liver disease, including fibrosis, cirrhosis, or chronic hepatitis, which were further verified by medical records of the National Death Index. Didn't know there was such a 
Mm. National Death Index. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting study, final analysis, and the final answer was, including 98,786 postmenopausal women, meaning older women, found that 6.8% of women who had consumed one or more sugar-sweetened beverages every day had an 85% higher risk of liver cancer and a 68% higher risk of chronic liver disease mortality compared with those who had fewer than three sugar-sweetened beverages per month. Okay, let's kind of pause it there. Yeah. So, you're drinking sugar-sweetened drinks, and we have correlated that to an increased rate of liver disease. Can I throw the bullshit flag now? Please do. Uh, there are people just genetically predisposed to liver disease. That's true. How do you isolate them from the study? Um, postmenopausal, that means hormonal changes have taken effect. Well, how do you how do you account for that in this study? Um, let's talk about the women. Obese, thin, osteoporosis. We can go down the litany of medical conditions that would certainly play a role in liver, right? Mm-hmm. How'd you how'd you account for that? Well, well, we didn't really account for that. What we wanted to do is sensationalize the headline. Yeah. Okay, that says you drink sugar, you're going to get a higher risk. Well, let's just be honest. You drink sugar, you're going to get liver cancer, says Brigham and Young Hospital in Massachusetts. Okay, now, uh, problem is, that's not true. You know how long people have been eating sugar, consuming sugar? I'm probably since it was ever found. (laughs) Yeah, like a long time. Sugar is very, very widely consumed in just about everything. Uh, However... The authors of the study noted that the study was observational. <laughs> Got that? And, you know, <laughs> and casualty cannot be inferred. They relied on self-reported responses regarding intake, sugar content, and outcomes. So we didn't really do a scientific study. We just talked to people and asked them questions and kind of watched. We observed what was happening. And uh, based on our observation, um, how do these stories make the news? I mean, just how does this this renowned teaching hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, in a state-of-the-art medical facility be involved in such just bullshit research? Right. Well, the research showed. Yeah. Um, You know, it just never ceases to amaze me, Sean. So do you think, I'm curious, right, do you think there's a formula in present day for any publication to get activity? And what I mean by activity is readers, clicks, depending on the forum, but what the what I just saw is headline, a lot of information right at the end. Well, don't forget this though. Really important. Right. But I'm I'm curious, right, from from all the information that you take in about safety concerns, do you see right, do you see any process to how people are maybe um uh Clouding the truth on Absolutely. safety issues. That's what it's all about. Okay. What we have in our what we have in our legacy or mainstream media is one hundred percent bullshit. I mean, they really are just all full of crap. I don't trust any of them. I mean, if, if, I don't even listen to the weatherman. It's going to be one hundred and two tomorrow. Really? Probably not. Okay. I'm, they can't get anything right. They can't get anything right. Um, and again, maybe that's an extreme example to weatherman because it is going to be one hundred and two tomorrow. But but my point is, h- how do you trust them? And so again, they always put up right the, the public face is some research organization faceless researchers they never named the researchers it was according to this hospital's so, research they put here's what, organization. You know, th- yeah. that's akin to, to saying like well you know russ you drive by a whataburger every every day to your studio um and therefore you're probably going to have a higher rate of heart disease because you know hamburgers from whataburger cause heart disease yeah. that's anecdotal well it just happens to be i drive by a whataburger let's say i eat a whataburger okay well you know those people who eat whataburgers have a 27 percent greater likelihood of heart disease hmm Versus eating what? Yeah. They don't tell you. Right. They don't say eating a hamburger versus a salad. It's just eating a hamburger. So that's anecdotal. It's observational. I love when they kind of worded that that way. It's observational, meaning we just we just noticed. Yeah. We just kind of sort of noticed that. Um, it's just total nonsense. The state of our country, the state of scientific research is in shambles. It's a joke. There is no legitimate, in my view, scientific research. Dr. Fauci and the CDC prove that. 
What we find in independent research is usually funded by some self-interest group for financial gain. There's always a political twist. And you know what? The hell with the public. We've got an agenda and we're shoving it down your throat. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because in this case, the article... I think probably is passing on good information, which I think we can all agree less sugar consumption is better for our health. Sure. But it's that they go down such a a narrow tangent. X consumption leads to Y outcome. Possibly, but it actually wasn't sufficiently proven. Got to go by. No, you hit it right in the head. A, a fair-minded, reasonable, you know, research paper would say we've concluded that, and we know this, that sugar intake should be minimized because of the health concerns, diabetes, obesity. We, you got me. Yeah, I understand that. That's true. But the scare tactic. Yes. If you if you eat sugar. Yes. You're going to die from liver cancer. Right. Even though there's no real evidence to support that, but yet that got published. That made the news. Yeah. That made the news. And so people catch the headline, right? They catch the sugar causes liver cancer part as they're changing their baby's diaper or on their way to work. They kind of don't really read. How many people actually read anything? How many people read newspapers a, or magazines? Nobody question. reads. They catch these little headlines in their in their in their headset on their way to you know working out. They don't they don't really follow through, and so it's all sensationalized. Uh-huh. So if you were to read the story, it starts out with scare you. Yeah. We're going to scare you. Yeah. You read through, well, we're not really certain this is really true. And then at the very end, well, you know, hey, just take it for, you know, for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. But this is a news story. Well, the whole story is about scaring people, right? So I, I got to ask you. All you all attack people with fear. You all attack people with fear again. I love that guy. We got to get him on the show. Yeah. And I think it's very fitting. So, so at a dinner table, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, I hear the comment, who doesn't have anxiety these days? Yeah, and it was such a comment that, like, man, I actually like felt it in my soul. I'm like, man, that right. like it hurt. It was sad right. for me to hear that um, from that individual. Now, let me ask you this, right? This is an example of okay, maybe there's some level of truth there, but clearly there's distortion, and we're seeing this across the board. A lot of publications are getting very crafty with how they draw your attention, and usually, a lot of times at the end of it, you're not feeling optimistic about no. things you're feeling worse all the news is bad <clears throat> so how because you, bad yeah. news sells good news doesn't nobody wants to hear this the success story I mean, there are i mean if you watch shows like one of my favorites shark tank uh I love shark tank yeah I like that. um wonderful you learn a lot about business uh you understand how investment takes place you understand you know how small entrepreneurs are trying to build their com- companies some get tremendous rewards others fail um, it's it's a wonderful story it's very educational and i just i'm addicted to it i uh, love the show but then you read nonsense you want listen to nonsense it just fills your head with nothing and you know what you come away confused confusion oftentimes leads to depression depression of course uh works hand in hand with anxiety uh then you throw in the big pharma the big medical you know um uh industry and everybody's got a drug for you what do you need that's, I think you just painted. What do um, you need, man? I got a pill for you. And by the way, the side effects of that pill I just gave you, we have a drug that deals with the side effects. We're going to do a story about this in the upcoming weeks about big pharma and the risks associated with taking all their uh, medication, which they advertise constantly. You can't help but turn on any television, anywhere, any channel and see, you know, Cialis, you name it. Everybody's got a drug for you. Okay, what are the consequences of that? What are the real risks? You know, yeah, there's this, you know, this kind of a panacea. Take this pill and you'll feel great. You're depressed? Well, here's a pill. By the way, don't watch the news because you really get depressed. Um, And it's terrible because most people have very little to truly be depressed about. We live in the best country in the world. Mm -hmm. We live in the best country on the planet. 100%. Nothing is better than what you got right here. Right Right. here, man, this is the place that everybody wants to be. Except the people who don't want to be here, but they never leave. The people that always threaten, well, you know, Trump wins for re-election. I'm moving to Canada. Guess what? They never moved to Canada. Maybe they should move to Canada. Be Canadian. I'm okay with that. I'm sure the Canadian government would welcome you. You know what? I love America. I like our country. I think we do a lot of good things. We're not perfect. We make a lot of mistakes. Who doesn't? Mm-hmm. Who doesn't? But you know what? When you when you take people who are, uh, we're the most generous people in the world. Yeah. And you want to scare the hell out of us with what? With nonsense, with yeah. misinformation, misleading stories. It's so talented. Time after time after time. And you know who really pays the, the cost? Sean, are people of your generation, young people, they can't process it. Look, I'm an older guy. I remember, like, you know, I remember when John Kennedy, well, 
I remember when John Kennedy got killed. I don't remember when he was in office. But I go back to like, you know, Nixon. Uh-huh. You know, most people know Richard Nixon from history books, and you're probably better off because there wasn't a lot a lot about the end of his career that was uh, was distinguished. Uh, but nonetheless, he, he is who he is, and uh, we have presidents that come, presidents go, and uh, we now lock him up, by the way. If you don't like the president, just put him in jail. <laughs> Welcome to Russia. Welcome to the gulags. But you wonder why people are depressed and, ang- and anxious is because we create that. That's, that's not by accident. And you know what, Sean? Follow the money. You know who benefits from depression and anxiety the most? Big Pharma. Big Pharma. You know the largest, they're the largest lobbyist in Washington, D.C., Big Pharma. Everybody's got a pill for you. And uh, well, and by the way, we, we now have a ninth COVID variant that's coming out. You need to worry about that. Put your masks on. Uh, no, you don't really need to worry about it. Uh, the first one was not particularly good, but we're done with it, and all the variants get weaker. You know, that's what happens. Variants get weaker. They don't get stronger. But p- put your mask on, even though they don't work. It's just scare the hell out of people. Yeah. And the people who are most vulnerable, Sean, the people who are the most vulnerable are the uneducated, the infirm, the elderly, and children Yes. who don't know any better. Yes. And so we, we scare the hell out of people for no good reason, okay? I'll play it again. We all attack people with fear. <laughs> he said that to Fauci. Remember, yeah. that was great. I love that. Yeah.